Hey guys and welcome to the channel now. You know, it, it's taken me about a whole day to recover from the Djokovic Nadal match. What an absolute classic, unbelievable match. Thank you for everyone who joined the stream. It was it was an unbelievable match. It really was, genuinely. And oh, my boy Rafa, unfortunately getting down by Novak Djokovic, who played incredibly well. He genuinely did. And that's why I am talking not about Nadal versus Verev or Nadal versus Tsitsipas. I'm talking about Novak Djokovic versus Stefanos Tsitsipas in the final of the Roland Garros 2021 final. And I tell you what, hopefully it will be a cracker. Now, before I go into the route to the final, I want to discuss the head to head, um, maybe a little bit about uh, them as well. And. I think more importantly, where this final may be won or lost as well, because I think that'll be quite important to discuss. So um, first of all, let's look at the head-to-head. -head. So 5-2 at the moment, Djokovic leads at 5-2. And if we look at previous uh, encounters, Djokovic has actually beaten Stefano Tsitsipas every time on clay. The only times that actually Tsitsipas has beaten Djokovic has been, where do you think, outdoor hard. So, in saying that, I don't know. It's going to be difficult, uh, but clearly last year they had a semi-final, which was very, very tight. Djokovic coming out there in five sets, and uh, Stefano Tsitsipas came back from two sets of love down to take it to a fifth set. So, that will be extremely interesting to see how this one turns out. Hopefully, we get another epic as well. Um, he actually also beat... Djokovic beats Tsitsipas in Rome. He dropped the first set. Then there was a rain delay. Now, I know you might say, oh, that's just excuses, but I'll tell you what made a difference. Uh, Djokovic went on to win the second and third at 7-5, 7-5, but it could have been a different story. So that was the most recent encounter. Um, obviously, it's not a best of five, so let's see. Uh, but you know what? It's going to be... Really, really fantastic encounter. Novak Djokovic obviously already won the Australian Open this year uh, against one of the so-called next-gen stars in Medvedev, and he made it look easy. Let's hope Sitsipas can put up a better fight. At uh, 22 years of age, the first Greek player to make a Grand Slam final. Can he be the first Greek player to win a Grand Slam? Is the main question. Djokovic, obviously 34 years of age and aiming to win his second French Open at Roland Garros and also his 19th Grand Slam, which would mean he would be within one Grand Slam, uh, one Grand Slam of Nadal and and Federer. Sorry, so he'd be in touching distance um, if he wins this one, and it would definitely be a big blow to. Nadal and Federer in terms of the number of slams because going into Wimbledon and the US Open, I think we can safely say he's the favourite. So to beat Nadal here on the clay was an incredible achievement by Novak Djokovic. Only the third time Nadal's been beaten at the French Open, both twice, sorry, to Novak Djokovic in a semi final, the other time to Robin Soderling. So uh, he just played phenomenally and he could potentially, if he wins this one, it will be a second career Grand Slam. That means winning every Grand Slam at least twice. Um, could he do a calendar year Grand Slam where he wins every single Grand Slam in the year? You know what? I wouldn't even be surprised. It would be incredible, and I think it would be tough given the younger stars coming through, but who knows? Anyway, let's discuss the the matchup then, and also where it'll be uh, won and lost. So before we go into where it'll be won and lost, let's very briefly touch upon their rose to the final. So um, let's touch upon Djokovic first, because, I mean, yeah, Tennis Sanger in the first round, straight sets win, Cuevas straight sets, Varanki straight sets, Mossetti, he had quite a few problems in that. Mossetti winning the first two sets, played unbelievably well. It looked like there might be an upset on the cards. Mossetti's level dropped dramatically in the third set. Djokovic's level went up here and uh, showed what he's about. And then next thing you know, he absolutely blows Musetti away. 6-1, 6 love in the third and fourth set. We go to a fifth. Musetti looks slightly injured. Just says, you know what, I'm done. So broke the spirit and will of the young Italian. Then he faced another Italian in the quarterfinal, Matteo Berrettini, and was actually two sets to one up. Uh, the crowd started to help Berrettini in that third set when he won it. 
Uh, but going into the fourth set without a crowd, um, Djokovic just ran out uh, a clear winner. And I think either way, crowd or no crowd, he probably would have won that one. Whether it was in four or five, who knows? But um, he definitely was playing the better tennis. Yes, he had some issues, but um, yeah. So let's then go on to uh, Nadal versus Djokovic. Now, I'm not going to talk about this too much because I, I think I was going to do a review of this match uh, kind of in depth and i think i might wait until after friend trip and the reason why i say that is because i genuinely think it's going to it might be a match a defining match um in not just the goat race but you know about Djokovic's career but just in tennis in general and i think it's something that needs to be looked into quite a bit so i think i'll i will do a separate video on that so keep an eye out for that after the french open um right let's go on to uh stefano sitspas then and uh, he, again, uh, pretty impressive, beating Jeremy Shardy in straight sets. Then Martinez uh, had a bit of trouble with John Isner, uh, but came through that in four. Really impressive because John Isner was playing very well. Karina Buster beat him in straight sets. Then uh, Daniel Medvedev beat him in straights. That was a, such an impressive performance. It really was. I uh, just looked so strong. And uh, against Zverev, the first two sets of that, even though you won them, both players their levels were not particularly high then we had um the third and fourth sets and it's the level started to get higher uh, and then the fifth set to pass his level just rose through the roof and that's kind of the level he needs against novak Djokovic. the level he had against daniel medvedev if you can find that level and the level in that fifth set against zverev then he's got a chance if he doesn't he has got a very limited chance um i genuinely think that um <clears throat> Okay, let's discuss then. Let's talk about why this can be won and lost. So, I think I think Novak Djokovic for him, one of the most important things is serving. If he can get his first serve percentage up, it's become more of a weapon nowadays. Then that will be make it very very hard, and it will be a long day for Stefanos Tsitsipas or. A quick day for Novak Djokovic, even because Stefanos Tsitsipas is not the best returner that we've seen um, on tour. He's not as good as Nadal and Djokovic. Uh, his returning was much better, I thought, against Medvedev, against Zverev. It was on and off. He needs to return like he did against Medvedev for sure. And but if Djokovic obviously has that first serve percentage drop, it's going to be very difficult. So that's something that is very very important, I think. In addition to that. I think for Djokovic is the forehand because if he can dictate points with a forehand and it's not breaking down on him like it did at points against Nadal um, in that first set um, where he lost it, uh, then you know what? It'll be again very, very tough for Sitsipas. It's not necessarily uh, the forehand that will, uh, you know, he'll hit loads of kind of one shot winners off straight away. It might be a cumulative thing, but. Um, it's definitely a weapon and a weapon that he's developed along with the serve. Um, Stefanos Tsitsipas, for him, I think he needs to just hope that Novak Djokovic does not have that level that he played against Rafa Nadal with. If he comes with that level in those last three sets, especially that last set or last two sets against Rafa Nadal, it's going to be so hard. He would genuinely need a miracle to get through someone, uh, to get through Novak Djokovic in that form. But if he can find that form that he has had against Medvedev and Zverev, and, and the form that I'm talking about is where his forehand, he's being able to dictate with the forehand, the into out forehand's working, he's hitting the ball cleanly on that side, uh, the backhand's solid as well, cross-court especially, um, and also then changing it down the line is quite impressive. Uh, and for me, the drop shot is really important, and it's something that he utilised really well against Medvedev, um, and it's something that he should be able to use as well against Djokovic, but Against uh, Zverev, he didn't execute it very well, and so he got punished. So he needs to use it sparingly, but at the right times. And I think if he does, it will be very useful. The other thing he needs to do, and again, this is a risk, but it's something that I think he has in his game, which is very useful, is coming to the net. And I think serving and volleying, especially behind his first serve, is very, very good. I think it's a good tactic. He's very good at the net. Um, even in points where it's a shorter ball by Djokovic, if he can just make sure that approach shot is is just extremely good. Um, it should give him an easy volley. But in saying that, it's Djokovic. He's one of the best passers 
of all time. So, yes, it may be difficult at times, but I think Sisvas needs to do that to ruin the rhythm of Djokovic. You don't want it to be one pace and, and let Djokovic get into a rhythm. As soon as he does, it's going to be a nightmare for Sefano Sitsabas. So, in my eyes, those are the key areas um, in this match. And I think Sitsabas has to play quite aggressively. He will have to play closer lines at times. Um, he can't play passively. If he plays passively like he did in those two sets that he lost as Verev, he has no chance. Genuinely has absolutely no chance. Um, he needs to make sure he plays at a very high level and hope that Djokovic doesn't play at the level we did against Nadal. Because if he does, I just cannot see Sitsipas getting through this. Genuinely, unless he has another level to his game that I haven't seen, then it's going to be nigh on impossible. But in saying that, Djokovic has only found that level against Nadal. Will he be tired? Will he be able to find that type of level? Was it just a level that came out because of the occasion against Rafa Nadal beating the best ever on clay? You know, he rose to the occasion. Will he potentially, which I don't think he will, but could he take advantage of the situation? Thinking, I've just faced the best guy on clay. Could there be an air of arrogance going into that Sitsipas um, final and thinking, you know what? This is going to be a lot easier. I can get through this. I would assume no. Um, but if it is, then Sispas needs to take advantage of that. He needs to come out strong. Um, Nadal obviously had a very quick start against Djokovic, went five love up. If Sispas can do that in the first set, but be more clinical than Nadal was, because he gave Nadal gave Djokovic a little bit of momentum in that back in that first set after then only closing out six three, rather than at, at a time he had six love was on the cards, and he had a chance to do it as well. He had. Uh, break and set point. So, yeah, clinical, I think, is the word that Sissipas will have to utilise. Like, he has to be clinical in his mindset and his game plan uh, and make sure that he's not tensive at all and tight. Because if he's, I know it's his first Grand Slam final and it's probably the hardest player to play, um, maybe besides Nadal in the final, maybe. But Djokovic in this form, uh, you could say it's actually even harder considering he's just beaten Nadal. So, Look, it's since past his first Grand Slam final, I'm not necessarily expecting him to win it. I'm expecting him to be competitive. I'm expecting at least four sets, potentially. Um, but I can't, I just can't see Djokovic losing this. It's a huge opportunity to get closer to the 20 slams that the and Federer have. It's also it's a mental win after beating Nadal to then win the French Open and say, look, even your favourite Grand Slam, the one that people think you're certain to win, and the, and the favourite to win, I can win that one too. And I'm even better than you on, on the clay at the moment. Now, mentally, it will take its toll. And I genuinely think he's a mental giant. Uh, so, look, in saying that, Sitspass has been mentally extremely strong as well. Uh, to come back how he did against Zverev was really impressive. The Medvedev performance where he's got a losing record against Medvedev and Medvedev gets in his head as well. They really dislike each other. was impressive. So, look, he's he needs to bring his A game mentally and physically. And if he can, he's got a chance. Um, I would actually, if you want my personal opinion on it, I think Djokovic will win. But if you ask me who I want to win... I'm an Adal fan, so you might think, oh, that's why he's saying it. That's why he doesn't want Djokovic to win. It's not actually that. It's just, I think, Stefanos Sitsipas, it would be such an amazing story for him to win it for Greece. Even if he was facing Nadal in the final, I'd want Nadal to win, but as, as I'm a Nadal fan, but, sorry, as I'm a Nadal fan, but Sitsipas, if he won it, I wouldn't be so upset about it, to be honest with you, because I genuinely feel that he's the next guy to win it from that generation. And he seems a little about him. So let's see. Okay, um, thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. Uh, apologies for uh, the hay fever sniffling and a bit of, uh, I guess, hoarseness to my voice. Um, please do remember to smash the like button and subscribe button as well, if you haven't done so already. And, of course, uh, click the notification bell for all future videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next video. And make sure you tune in to the live stream for the final. Thank you.